Inaprubahan na ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang resolusyon na naglalagay sa anim na lugar sa bansa sa State of Calamity matapos na daanan ng bagyong udet. Sa kanyang Talk to the People nitong Martes ng gabi, sinabi ng Pangulo na kanyang inaprubahan ang resolusyon na isinumite ng National Disaster Risk Reduction Management Council na ilagay sa State of Calamity ang Region 4B, 6, 7, 8, 10 at 13 Karaga Region. Ang nasabing desisyon niya ay para mapabilis ang rescue, relief at rehabilitation efforts ng mga government at private sectors. Magugunitang personal na binisita ng Pangulo ang mga lugar na sinalanta ng bagyo noong nakaraang mga araw. Pakinggan natin si Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. Para hindi ako makalimutan, uh, I have uh, decided to declare a state of calamity. So, I will sign it now. Yes, sign yung papel. The NDRRMC, even sa abbreviated, for a little mahaba pa rin, came out with a resolution recommending that the state of calamity be declared over the affected areas, and this would include region 4B, 6, 7, 8, 10 and 13. Yun pinirma ko. The declaration of the state of calamity will hasten the rescue and relief and rehabilitation efforts of the government and the private sector, including saan galing tulong, be it outside or tayo-tayo lang, ah, And this will also be an effective mechanism to control the prices of goods and commodities in the areas. Iyon na pakinggan si Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte. Samantala, inatasan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang pagpapalabas ng pondo mula sa Office of the President para ipantulong sa mga nasalanta ng Bagyong Udet sa bahagi ng Visayas at Mindanao. Sinabi ng Pangulo na ang nasabing pera ay hindi calamity o contingency fund at sa halip ay mismong pondo ng kanyang opisina. Ito niya ang nakikita niyang paraan para may maitulong sa mga dinaanan ng nasabing bagyo. Kinausap na rin niya ang Department of Budget and Management para makahagila pa ng karagdagang pondo. Tiniyak din ng uh, Pangulo sa mga mamamayan ng nasalanta ng uh, bagyong udet na ginagawa ng gobyerno ang lahat ng kanilang makakaya para matulungan ang mga nasalanta ng naturang sama ng panahon. Narito pang patuloy na pahayag ni Pangulong Duterte. Kung may mga resources pa yung naiwan, pati yung mga munisipyo, yung... If there is a calamity funds ninyo, pwede ninyo gamitin. Ngayon na, pagbigay na ninyo, total, if it's a money intended for another purpose, you can always replace it. I said, give me until or before. It's before or until Friday. Pwede na. Okay. Friday na ano lang ko. I assure you that it will be given this week. At the very least, yung pinakam mabilis na paraan. Tinig po yan ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte sa kanyang pagsasalita pa rin sa ulat sa bayan. Samantala, muling iminungkahi na mari Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang pagsusot ng face shield bukod pa sa face mask dahil sa banta ng Omicron coronavirus variant. Sa kanyang Talk to the People nitong Martes ng gabi, sinabi nito na kahit na binabatikos at pinagtatawanan ng ibang bansa ang paggamit ng face shield sa mga pampublikong lugar ay malaking tulong anya ito para maiwasan ang pagkalat ng virus. Pinayuan niya ang mga mamamayan na huwag mo nang itapon ang mga face shields dahil ito ay magagamit bilang doble proteksyon. Magugunita ang nunakarang mabuan ay tinanggal ng Interagency Task Force ang paggamit ng face shield matapos ang tuluyang pagbaba ng kaso ng COVID-19 sa bansa. Muli, pakinggan natin si Pangulong Duterte. You know what's uh, really uh, not funny but uh, more of uh, a... Reaction of a human behavior. 
uh, some countries even uh, criticize us for uh, requiring the requiring the face shield. Alam mo sa totoo lang. I I believe you that in some areas, in some countries, the the people there are so so much concerned about their human rights. Yan ang that's the favorite catchword ng mga ano ngayon eh human rights. Everything that they would always invoke human rights. Everything that government says that there's a human right violation. Nakakatulong sa Pilipino ano totoo lang. I think the compliance of our citizens in the matter of strictly enforcing the mask, so on. And when somebody, well, it might be not really a well-studied proposition, but I would dare say that that shield will add uh, another layer of protection in addition to that. Kaya yung talagang gusto ni kayo matamaan, huwag ninyong itapon yung shield. Continue using it. I advise you because I, I, I really firmly believe that the wearing of uh, that uh, face shield has contributed a lot. I cannot uh, quantify or by what percentage, but uh, it's just a gut feeling na yung kasi tayo. Samantala, mga kabombo, mga Kastar Nation, sa ibang balita naman, ibinunyag ni Senator Richard Gordon, ang chairman ng Senate Blue Ribbon Committee, na may laparihin si Lin Wei Xiong, na business associate ng dating economic advisor na si Michael Yang, at siya rin uh, financial manager ng Parmalee Pharmaceutical Corporation. Si Lina ikinasal kay uh, congressional uh, candidate Rose Nonolin ay inaakusahan na sangkot sa ilegal na droga. Makailang uh, pagkakataon din na pinatawag sa Senado subalit hindi dumadalo sa ginawang ikalabing pitong Senate Blue Ribbon Committee hearing ng uh, manumalyaw-manong pagbili ng gobyerno ng medical equipment mula sa Parmalee Pharmaceutical Corporation ay lumabas na si Lin ay siyang uh, financial manager ng kumpanya. Nakasa dito sa certificate na inilabas ni Parmalee Corporate uh, Secretary Mohit Dargani. Depensa naman ni na Parmali Chairman Huang Tsuyen at Dargani na ang trabaho lamang nila, ni Lin ay uh, tumayo bilang garantor sa mga supplier. At kaugnay nito, todo depensa nga ang uh, Singaporean na may-ari ng naturang uh, kumpanya at narito ang bahagi ng pag ni Senator Richard Gordon dito kay Parmali Chairman Huang Tsuyen. Can you tell us? The seven billion dollars, seven billion, and that you cannot account, the company cannot account for three point four billion that was purchased, and you know, importations or that can be accounted only account for six hundred thirty million. You are the president, and you cannot account for seven point nine billion unacquired, unaccounted importations. Now, I don't want to be unfair to you. $50 million in Taiwan is a lot of money that you could launder in the Philippines through this so-called bola bola purchase from PSDBM. Mr. That would have cleaned the money from Taiwan. If I had $50 million US dollars, I wouldn't seek to ask for the help of Mr. Michael Young. Well, I, I'm not interested in that. All I'm saying is it would appear when you look at all these events, all these facts, there seems to be something wrong, or as they say in Shakespeare, there seems some, something rotten in the streets of uh, Denmark. It seems that you come after the fact when uh, Lincoln Ong was already in trouble. Uh, you said, don't know, you don't put the, uh, yeah, I, I would say that Michael Young really was helping us, they lent us money. And then when Dar Dargani was in trouble, then you come out and say, I make inquiries, but actually you were ready to pay $140,000 into the pier uh, to get them to Dubai. Uh, you never even uh, lift the finger and say, hey, buddy, uh, uh, we have nothing to hide. You stay there. We'll fight it out. We'll fight it out. We have nothing to hide. We're honest people. I didn't see that. All right? So what is happening is the peer, especially in the circumstances that, wow, you must have gotten along with it. They're living in Davao. That's the president's hometown. They okay.
Alas 7.12 Hindi naman na itago ni Pangulong Rodrigo Duterte ang kanyang pangamba na baka tumas muli ang kaso ng COVID-19 sa Pilipinas dahil sa Omicron variant. Sa Talk to the People kagabi, pinatitiyak ng Pangulong Duterte na talagang tatlo pa lamang ang kaso ng Omicron sa Pilipinas at hindi pa tayo nalulusot ang nasabing variant. Pag-amin ng Pangulong Duterte, natatakot siyang muli magkaroon ng COVID-19 surge dahil manipis na ang budget ng gobyerno. Kaya maging sa Typhoon Odette ay hirap makalikom ng pondo ang pamahalaan para sa mga relief operation sa mga lugar na sinalanta ng bagyo. Narito ang Pangulong Duterte. Natatakot lang ako. Uh, you know, uh, somehow, kinakabahan ako. Kasi uh, let me be frank to the public, depleted na yung pera talaga ng Pilipinas. Even coping up with the Uh, growing expenses for the typhoon uh, victims. Pinag, uh, ano namin, niwalis nga kung ano pang matira. Uh, ubusin na lang.